Hey, hey, hey. I really hope that you all are having a good day. So, the reason why I'm on is because last night I had a dream. And within that dream, um, I was seemingly like at a, a friend's house, even though it was a person I didn't know in the dream. Um, I was at their house and we were standing outside. The garage door was open and we were just talking. And then all of a sudden, I see a car, you know, like it wasn't going fast, but it was going like at a speed, like the person just, you know, they had to be asleep at the wheel <clears throat> um, or lost control of the car or something like that. So when I, I hurried up and I tried to run to catch the car because I saw it coming towards the, the house, like underneath the garage, I, I, I ran over and my eyes didn't focus on anybody on the driver's side. It was like nobody was on the driver's side. The person who was supposed to be driving the car was on the passenger side. And his right arm was hanging out of the car and he was asleep. And I kept on trying to wake him. I'm like, hey, hey, sir, you about to crash. Hey, sir, you about to crash. And, <coughs> excuse me, he didn't wake up. Even when he he crashed until the the object that he hit, he still didn't wake up. So I was like, hey, sir. I'm talking about he was sleeping, like snoring, all that. Good sleep. Sir, sir. My eyes looked and they focused on a card that was sitting near the shift. <clears throat> and... On the card was written in uh, red letters, uh, AEP. So it's like he was attending the, um, you know, the meetings to try to uh, stop drinking. And when I when I got close enough to the car, I could smell the the whiff of the alcohol. Like it wasn't it wasn't strong, but it was you know it was on him. And um, so that was signifying when the Lord had me to see that he was attending those meetings to keep from uh, backsliding, you know, drinking and stuff, um, that he had backslid again. And <clears throat> after I finally was able to wake him up, he woke up and he was like, oh, for real? Like, he was like shocked, like, I, I did? Like, confused? He didn't have any idea that he had, you know, crashed into something. And so he got out of the car he was okay no harm to his body anything like that and i just began to take charge of the whole scene so i'm grabbing paper and uh i went in he didn't have like a license plate or anything like that on the back it was just like a little paper like he had just gotten the vehicle something like that so i was taking down that information and then for some strange reason, there was another paper that pertained his address and all of the other information I needed on the, uh, it was taped to the back of the seat on the driver's side. So I began to look and take down that information. And then I asked him, I said, uh, he was like, uh, do you have everything you need? That's what he said. Cause I, I gotta go. And I was like, um, at first, I was like, yeah, I got everything I need. And I thought about it. I said, well, can I see your driver's license? And he said, um, no, you can't see my driver's license. He said, the state took it. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I felt like a deep urge in me that wanted to pardon this man. But when I looked at the damages that was done to the my friend whose house I was at, which was somebody I didn't know, uh, property, I began to tell him, I was like, if it was me, I would pardon you. I said, but there's damage to, you know, the people's property. I said, you see, it's a hole. You can see straight through into the refrigerator because he crashed into the fridge. <clears throat> and I felt like a deep sense to pardon this man. But I couldn't because it wasn't, you know, it wasn't my place. It wasn't my property. Um, but long story short, I got the man's information and I ended up letting him go. And so um, the Lord had begun to give a verse to me. 
And it was when Jesus had said, you know, he asked the father to forgive them for they know not what they do. And a lot of us have backslid. We've done some things that we shouldn't have done, rather if it's now or in times past, and we repented from those mistakes. God heard you. He's pardoned you. But the enemy is taking those things and keeping them before you, keeping you dwelling on past mistakes, keeping you dwelling on things that people did to you. And some of these people are gone. Some of these people have passed on or moved on with their life and you're still holding on within yourself to things <clears throat> that just needs to be pardoned by now. And I know that, you know, a lot of things that people did to you, it really hurt. But when you think about it, you know, your life is at a standstill. And it's because you're steady holding on to the past and the enemy knows that. And that's how he tricks us and slips us up into getting stuck into the past, past thoughts, past things that we did, past things God forgave us for. We have not yet forgiven ourselves. And the enemy knows that if he could keep you dwelling on that, then you can't move forward into the new. He knows that. And so that's why he keeps bringing it up to you every day, every night. Some people, every day of your life, you are waking up and you just cannot let this thought go. You cannot let forgive yourself for the mistake you made. Forgive others for their trespasses against you. The enemy knows how that works. Don't fall for it. If you backslid and you repented to God, God heard you. Forgive yourself. Don't let the enemy tell you that he hasn't forgiven you or that he has just turned his back on you. That's not true. It's not true. God has forgiven you. Baby, did you want to say anything? Good morning. <laughs> so my husband says, good morning. All right, you all. It's time for me to clock in for work. I'll see you all next time. I hope that this reaches whoever it needs. But yeah, I just felt like a just a, a deep urgency to pardon this man for what he had done but the damages were still exposed <clears throat> the the i could concentrate on the damages i see the damages the damages were still before me so somebody is holding on to damages things that people have done in order for you to be forgiven this is the part people don't understand, a lot of us. In order for us to be forgiven, we have to forgive others. In order for us to be pardoned. So you got to let go. We got to let go of the things that people do against us. Because if we, don't, if we hold on to that, we can't be forgiven. Y'all know what um, our Father's Prayer say? Y'all know. Y'all read it? If you haven't read it, read it. It says, forgive those who trespass against us as we forgive them. Forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So in order to be forgiven, we have to first forgive. All right. See you all next time.